all, this is Dana here. In this video, I'm going to be showing you a quick tutorial about how to do beading. Uh, a lot of cross-stitch patterns do have beading in them, or sometimes people substitute uh, French knots for beads. Uh, if you're somebody who doesn't like French knots, then I'll put a link to the tutorial I have in the video description below. Uh, it's actually a really easy tutorial, so uh, even if you've never been able to do French knots, I guarantee you'll be able to do them after the tutorial. Uh, but a lot of people do like using beads as a replacement just because they add a little bit more sparkle or sometimes patterns do call for beads. So if you're just sort of using your own bead colors, I would suggest uh, being aware that sometimes bead colors can show up differently depending on the fabric color. Like you can see here this is the same garnet bead from Mill Hills um, and you can see it, it doesn't show up as well on the purple but it does show up nicely on the green and on the, on the cream color. So that's one thing to be aware of. So I'm going to be walking you through a few of the basics that you'll need for beading. Obviously the first thing you're going to need is needles and I've got a couple of different samples here. I'll just focus this in a minute once I pick these up. They're a little bit tricky to pick up sometimes. So these are what's called big eye or wide eye needles. Let's focus them if I can. So here's one of the packages I got so you can see what they're called. Big eye needles. So basically it looks like there's no eye on them, right? It looks like just one solid straight in the metal. But the really cool thing about these ones is you can actually use um, regular embroidery floss with these, like even up to two strands, because they actually split in the middle. Ta-da! So you just thread your needle through that, or sorry, you, th you thread your thread through here. This is basically your eye, and then it catches down the end. Both the ends are soldered together, sorry, soldered together, and you stitch with that. So I'd be uh, careful with these. I mean, they are... They're not really flimsy, but they are longer, so they do bend a little bit, so just be a little bit more gentle with these. But uh, I know uh, quite a few stitchers use these, and designers and whatnot use these kind of wide-eye needles, or big-eye needles, and uh, and they're really quite handy because you can basically thread them with anything. And as long as the thread will go through your beads, then uh, they will go through, then these are perfect for that. Otherwise, uh, there are other options. You can use just a regular embroidery needle. As you can see here, this one's been threaded with one strand of uh, DMC embroidery floss. Uh, but what you do have to be careful is making sure that your embroidery needle does go through the bead itself. Because sometimes the eye of the needle, the bead gets caught on it. So you do want to test it and make sure before you start stitching. These beads I'm using here, these are uh, size 11 beads, uh, also uh, called 2.5 millimeter beads. So they're seed beads. So you can see that one works fine. And you can also use what's uh, you normally used is a proper beading needle. So beading needles are a lot finer and thinner. Sorry, let's see if I can see that here and focus it for you. Oops. So this one's been threaded with some special cotton. I'll show you in a moment. So you can see it's got a really fine eye on it. So what you're going to have to be doing with your little your little embroidery needle or this kind of needle is you're going to have to use a needle threader in order to uh, thread these properly. So the trick is with using one of these, particularly these metal ones that you can get at like dollar shops or whatever, is when you're pulling your, your floss through, crimp your finger here, like hold it here because these, it's got a little magnet I stuck on the back so I can attach it to things, but um, I'm just going to zoom in here if I can. I don't know if it's going to quite work. It might be too close. Uh, but basically, the way that these are crimped together, this little wire here is just kind of just crimped on, so it's not actually that firm. So when I use a, a, a needle threader, I always make sure to hold it quite tightly and prevent these, uh, these metal bits sliding out when you're pulling, it through, you're pulling your thread through your needle. So as you can see here, this is one strand of the DMC floss and that works fine for even though it's a, such a fine eye. So the other one, the beading needle here, I've threaded that with with a special bead, it's called bead string. There's lots of different varieties of this. Uh, you can get ones that are waxed as this one is. You can get ones that are almost like an invisible thread and it's almost like a really really fine fishing line. Those are a little bit trickier to anchor so just be aware of that when you're stitching. Um, for this one, for this little demonstration, I've just done a really small knot in the back, but what you can do is just uh, leave a slightly longer tail and then weave your threads back through. And the good thing about the beading needles is they are incredibly sharp, so you can actually, um, I'm not going to do it because I'm going to do a sample in a moment, but you can actually sort of feed your, the tip of your needle just barely through the fabric itself and actually weave it back and forth a little bit and that will help anchor your, your thread as well. 
So what I've got here too, I don't know if you can quite see it sort of hiding. This is a, a bead mat. So I got this off of Amazon. It's called the Tacky Mat. Here's the package here. So it's really cool. Like it's got it's sticky. So you can see the beads just stick to it. So normally if you get beads, if you've ever worked with beads, you know that they can scatter around really easily. Do be aware if you're opening bead packages like these, to be really careful when you're opening, like don't just fling them open because your beads will go flying everywhere. If that does happen, and it happens to everybody, no matter how careful you are, you knock your beads or whatever. I, don't, I can't demonstrate this because I don't actually have a vacuum cleaner, but if you get the hose of the vacuum cleaner and you put like a, 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 like a nylon or a, like a pantyhose over the end and hold it on when you're, when you're vacuuming, the nylon will actually prevent the beads from going up into the tube, which is obviously not good, but then they'll stick to the outside of the nylon, so you can use that to vacuum up any beads that you might have dropped. So that's a really, really good tip. And this little mat here, it comes with um, a little plastic sheet that you can cover it up with. Again, if you don't want to use it for a while, you can actually stick your needles to this as well. It's kind of neat stuff, but yeah, it is quite tacky, so you can see that you can actually like tip this upside down and the beads don't fall off of it. So if you're working with a specific color, then just dump out a little pile of them onto here and they'll actually stick, which is really, really handy. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to follow a pattern. So uh, it depends on which designer uh, your patterns you're using, but this is a, a common way of doing beading. I'm just going to move the camera a little bit so you can see this. I'm just going to move it up a bit. Alright, so as you can see here, I've got, so normally in a pattern it would either be black and white symbols or color blocks or whatever, I'm just keeping this as color blocks so it's easier to see. So these circles are obviously your beads and I've got two different colors in this little section here. So what you're going to be doing in the patterns that I'm designing and some other people's patterns, like I know Shannon Christine's pattern, she does this with hers. There isn't a color underneath the bead, and the reason for that is if you're, I'll just flip it into symbols so you can see it for a second. If you've got the symbols showing on your pattern, and then you, and then you've got your bead over top of it, you may not be able to tell the difference between, say, this shade of mustard and this shade of mustard because the bead is covering most of the symbol. So it's actually easier. Um, to not have the color underneath of it. If you wanted to stitch the color underneath of it first, just to create more cohesion and stuff like that, that's totally fine. But uh, when I chart these patterns, this is how I'll be doing it, just because it does make it a little bit easier for you to find your bead placement and prevent confusion about, oh, which color is it supposed to be? Is it this one or this one? And, you know, it just makes life a lot easier to, to not have it. Um, underneath and the bead was actually going to take up most of that space anyway so uh, if you're using seed beads then I'm going to be doing the demonstration on 14 count fabric so these would work probably up to about 25 count over two if you're going sort of any bigger than that like say 11 count or something like that your bead isn't going to take up as much of the square so you will see a little bit of the fabric showing but I think the magnificence of the bead will cover up any potential issues with sizing and whatnot. If you're not sure, then you can always um, talk to the designer and say, well, I'm using this size of fabric. Would this be okay for this particular side of, size of beads? And then you're going to be fine. So what I'm going to do, so in this case, I'm going to go over one. If you're doing, say, 25 count over two or 28 count fabric over two, then you're obviously going to go up one over two. So this is a really simple way of doing beading. So I'm going to show you here. So I'm just going to put this down for a second. So with your beads stuck to your little mat. You can get special little tins and stuff like that too that has this sticky stuff on one side of the tin and like a magnet on the other side for your needles. So you just sort of scoop up one of your beads. So you've already come up through the top of your fabric. Put your bead down. So to anchor, so I'm gonna I'm just gonna do these four beads here as a demonstration. To anchor your bead, I'm just gonna do a half stitch, a tent stitch. So I'm going to go from this lower corner here up to here. And be aware that the beading needles are a little bit uh, more fragile, so you do have to be a little bit more careful with them. Alright, so that's anchored there. So as far as what color thread to use when you're beading, I would recommend uh, using a similar uh, thread color to your base fabric color, because then your uh, stitch isn't going to show up as much. 
But I mean, not much of the stitch is going to be visible anyway, especially if you have other stitches around them and other beads around them. Alright, so I'm going to come up again. I'm just going to dip down, I'll show you this again. So you can see the hole in the beads there. Sorry if this is a bit out of focus. Just pick it up. Try not to whip your beads around because the needles are a little bit flexible. It's easy to kind of wing them around and accidentally make your beads go flying. Alright, so I went into this bottom left corner here. I'm going in the top right. And that's pretty much it. That's all there really is to beading. Pick up another one. Oops. See, if you don't pay attention, you can try to pick up a bead before you've even come up through the back of your fabric again, which means you're going to stitch your bead onto the back of the fabric. All right. So if you're working on really, really fine translucent fabric, so I've got my bead there ready to go, then what you can do instead of just doing the one stitch, the, the half stitch through, like I'm doing here, is you can actually come up again the other side and do your stitch the other way, but that is actually going to turn your bead a different direction as well, so you can come up, go through, and then, but the, your bead is actually going to change the position it's facing at, so do be aware of that, and if you're going to do it one way or the other, like using either one stitch or basically a full cross, just going back to the back of the fabric, then do be consistent across your whole piece, because otherwise your beads are all going to be facing different directions. So whichever way you choose is fine. I just do the half stitch because this fabric is fine. If, I would only sort of do the full cross if you're stitching on something really, really translucent, like maybe a gauze or something like that. Then I would do the two stitches just to help anchor it. But for this, it's fine. So there you go. So you can see I've followed the pattern here. I've got one and then two next to each other. Oops, sorry, I'm going to focus out of it so you can see it. So I've got the one stitch here, and then two up, and then one up here. So hopefully that helps. If you uh, have any questions, if something wasn't in focus, because it's obviously hard to keep this in focus and stitching at the same time, uh, then please do let me know. As far as anchoring your thread, you could anchor it the same way you would any other um, thread. So I would always recommend doing your beads last. So after your main cross stitches, after your main cross stitch, after your back stitch, do your beads last because that way um, you're not going to be accidentally trying to do back stitch and getting it wrapped around a bead when you try to pull the back stitch through. That's just going to make you bananas. So do always do your beads last. And one tip I heard was uh, if you start at the bottom of your project and work up, that tends to be easier, but experiment, do what's easiest for you. I guess it depends whether you're using a hoop like this. For uh, beadwork, using a hoop is a little bit easier because it helps keep the, the threads a little bit more separated and visible. But, you know, if you like to stitch in hand, like I usually do, then, you know, do whatever is comfortable for you. Do experiment and do try different types of the needles as well because... Uh, you, you may find that you prefer the really, really short embroidery needle, or you may prefer that you find that you prefer the really long, uh, the big eye needles as well, because they are so easy to thread. So that's it for now. If you have any questions, please do feel free to let me know. Um, if I haven't explained something well enough, please let me know. Uh, if you'd like access to some of the uh, Peacock and Fig free patterns, please uh, click the little link that's going to pop up on the right of your screen right now. Uh, that will take you to the sign up page where you can sign up and get access to all the free patterns. And uh, if you like this video, please uh, click the like button. If you'd like to subscribe, please feel free to do that. And if you click the little bell icon once you've subscribed, then that will actually give you notifications for every time I upload a new video. And that's it. Thanks so much, and I hope you have a great day. Bye for now.